Hi guys, I wanted to make a little movie um, just kind of detailing some of uh, the trials and tribulations I've been going through goofing around with uh, the Canvas um, uh, HTML5 Canvas option in Flash uh, with this assignment that I uh, gave you about making a website I, I did suggest maybe trying out uh, HTML5. The benefit is, is it creates just HTML5 and JavaScript files uh, which are readable on mobile devices and you know a variety of devices rather than just um, in things that will uh, run SWF um, files. So it doesn't require Flash Player. Um, the you know some of the drawbacks are that it, some of the supports limited so I'm, I'm just going to kind of walk through some of this, and this is by um, no means uh, very well designed, but I, th I think I will at least give you some hints, and I'm going to make these projects available online too, so if you want to take a look at them and goof around with them yourself, uh, you can as well. So just uh, right off the bat, I'm using Flash CC. Um, which has, uh, if I make a new document here, it has the, op uh, the ability to make an HTML5 canvas. So that's what I'm doing. I've, I've made a, a new HTML5 canvas. And uh, this is the end result. I'm, I'm going to just go over the timeline here. In my timeline, I have uh, four frames. So my first frame, second frame, third frame, fourth frame. Right now you don't see anything on there um, because inside of each of these I have movie clips and the movie clips actually animate. So if I double click on this movie clip for example it slides in from the top. Um, there's another movie clip for the bottom and if I double click on it it slides in from the bottom You'll notice that I'm using classic tweens for all of these guys rather than the standard motion tween. From what I've been reading, um, HTML5 or JavaScript, um, when you use a motion tween, I guess the code is a little bit bigger and clunkier um, than just a classic tween. So that's why I've kind of reverted. And again, you can tell it's a classic tween because it has this little arrow that runs from the first keyframe to the last keyframe. Whereas with the standard motion tween, you see just a big block of blue there. And motion tweens can be quite nice. It's, it's kind of strange to revert to this. But again, you would get to this by right clicking and you would just choose create classic tween. Um, so anyway, that's uh, if we get back to kind of the logistics of this, this is why you don't see anything happening on these frames yet. Um, but if I test this, I'm just going to press command return or control enter on the PC. It opens up into uh, a browser. I'm, this is in Safari. And you can notice uh, I have a little uh, bunny here that's actually a button. So as you pass over the button, it has an overstate that gives you a little bit of extra information. Um, I don't know if this is inspired by Easter or whatever, but uh, you can see that as I click around, there's um, motion happening in all of these cases. Um, and in this one, we actually have an alpha fade where it fades in from, from zero alpha. If I click back on home, the bunny comes back in. Notice that the, um, that the, the sky and the pond don't come back in. And again, this is a little button state, so you can make buttons. This is kind of a neat trick to remember whether you're doing um, HTML5 or just standard Flash. If you want to just have stuff appear, you don't always have to do it through ActionScript. You can make little buttons and, and do that. Um, the hit state for this button, which is the fourth um, keyframe that you set, the hit state is just this outer rectangle. So if I'm passing over here, that little guy doesn't show up. It only happens when I move over the image. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. So um, the cool thing about this is this is kind of a little mini site. Uh, just imagine having extra information. We could have text pop up. We could obviously make this bigger. Um, if you were to make this for, let's say, a tablet, you might do something that's maybe 1,000 by 700. Um, uh, that, that might be uh, pretty close to tablet size, uh, so that would, that would get you close. Um, 
but uh, or you might look at some of Dreamweaver's spec sheets for setting up for like an iPad because Dreamweaver will give you real good specifics for those different designs. But I think a thousand by seven hundred would be fine. This is just the standard five hundred. Um, let's see, I, I'm not even sure what it is. If we come back to Flash here, um, it's five fifty by four hundred is this setup. Okay, so that's what it looks like uh, as, as we run it. Um, if we come out to the finder here, um, I'm, I'm in a folder. I was goofing around with this a lot today. So um, there's lots of stuff in here. The, the file that we just ran was this mcs, index mcs.html. Here's my FLA, FLA file. Notice that it generates an HTML page and then it also generates a JavaScript page. Um, in addition to that, there's an images folder that it pulls those images from. So here's bunny and chicks and, and so forth. So uh, anyway, I was walking through kind of the output that Flash has. I have to apologize, my cat was meowing and I had to stop to move her out. Uh, high production quality with these videos uh, guaranteed. So anyway, uh, you can see here that the images folder actually uh, stores copies of these little uh, of these little graphics that Flash was using. When you make an SWF, the, those files can be completely internal to the SWF. But since this is uh, a web project, um, Flash ends up creating uh, a folder for images and drops any um, vector, or I'm sorry, uh, pixel-based images into that folder. So uh, that's kind of the setup. Again, we, we have uh, uh, the actual FLA file, um, the HTML file, a JavaScript file, images. If you happen to use sounds, it'll create a sounds folder for you as well. Currently, um, with the, the version of CC that I'm using, which is, um, this is early April 2014, uh, it doesn't support video at this time. Um, now, I know that HTML5 does have some support for video, so I would imagine that newer versions of Flash might have that, but, but you don't see that in here. And, you know, there's other issues that come up. Um, you'll notice, for instance, the 3D uh, rotation tool is not available if you're working in Flash um, with Canvas. And if you go under window, stuff like um, you don't see any compiler errors because uh, JavaScript just runs straight. So one of the biggest issues that come up, and in fact, I'll show you one that was bothering me, um, was an issue with com without getting compiler errors. Usually compiler errors just seem like such a drag when you're working with ActionScript, but it's actually quite a godsend. It helps you know what's wrong, and since you don't get that in, in JavaScript, that, that makes life a little more uh, difficult. Components aren't available with um, Flash in uh, making a Canvas, uh, an HTML5 Canvas thing. So that's, that's a drag too. Um, and again, maybe those things will come in here or not. But uh, one, one thing, again, I would recommend is that when you're doing tweens, you can do shape tweens, but if you're doing motion do tweens, use the classic tween instead of uh, the standard motion tween. Um, so anyway, that's, that's kind of the setup. And, and again, if, if we run this, uh, we get all these elements repeating. Notice that I can click on any one of these pages, and again, these are just frames in Flash, but we can make these web pages. Um, it runs a movie. The movie stops at the end, um, and those movie clips um, in the beginning are off the stage, and then they trigger and run and, and come on the stage. Um, so, and if I go back to home, it just runs the, the rabbit. So that's the setup. From here, I'm going to uh, do another movie where we open up a blank document, or at least one that's set up that doesn't have ActionScript, or I'm sorry, JavaScript, and we'll, uh, we'll take it from there and actually put all the code in. And you'll see that it's actually pretty straightforward.